Warning, the following podcast has been classified as insanely lucrative. Listener discretion is advised. And sure enough, you know, I got uh, I got hammered. You know, by the time the product was ready to be shipped out to Amazon, I went back to see, you know, if that other company's products had increased their sales. And it had dropped like to one-tenth the number that it was. And I was just really, really shocked. Your attention, please. 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 Listening to the AMPM podcast may cause recurring revenue streams and unfair, unfair advantages over your competitors. Other side effects may include better wallets, fired bosses, and longer vacations. Listen at your own risk. Here's your host, seven-figure entrepreneur and online marketing madman, Manny Coates. Manny Coates. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I'll be your host during this episode. Speaking of which, we are on episode number seven. This is a continuation from the last episode where we were talking about researching products to private label on Amazon. We'll use this episode to cover the remaining items that uh, were missing from the last episode. So there's a few things to cover. The first thing to talk about, I think, would be reviews. Um, We talked about this a little bit in some of the previous episodes, and I'm going to get into reviews in future episodes in much greater detail. But why are reviews important? Do they affect your rank? Mm, Well, it depends who you ask. So there's two types of ranks, right? There's the best sellers rank, the BSR, um, and reviews won't affect that. That's based on sales. And then you have your search results ranking. Uh, What page are you pulling up on the search results and in what position? And Based on what I've seen, based on what I've learned and talking to other people, reviews themselves won't give you a better search results position, at least directly. Now, indirectly, it has a massive effect. And let me explain that for for just a minute. Let's take two products. Let's just assume that everything is exactly identical between the two products, okay? And they both have the exact same number of sales. Now, suddenly, one one of the products has 50 reviews. They are five star reviews. And then the other product still has zero reviews. They should rank on the search results pages roughly about the same. What's going to happen though is that as people come in and they start researching products, what they want to buy, they're going to see this product that has all the reviews and it's going to be uh, essentially social proof. It's going to show what people actually like, right? So they, there's 50 people that have said this is an amazing product. It's super awesome five-star review and then the other one doesn't have anything so if they have to make a choice between the two products which one are they going to buy they're probably going to buy the one that has the reviews now since they're buying that and because they found that product through some kind of search results right they typed in something like you know they were looking for the blue widget they made that sale now the term blue widget is actually going to rank a little bit higher so that particular product for that particular search term ranks a little bit higher and the search was i'm sorry the uh, the reviews themselves were directly responsible for that or they were maybe they were indirectly responsible but what's happening is that the reviews themselves are increasing the conversion rate of that particular product and because that conversion rate is going up Amazon's going to give you a little bit of their uh, their Amazon love they're going to rank your product a little bit higher on the search results for specific keyword terms I hope that makes sense in an upcoming podcast I'll be talking about reviews specifically like when you need them how to get them what you're going to be paying for them or not. Um, and we'll, we'll go into more detail on that later. But the reason I'm bringing up reviews now is because reviews are important in terms of trying to determine which products you actually want to sell, okay, or which ones you're going to private label. So one of the things you want to do is you want to go look at your narrowed down list of products or, or maybe even one product. You're going to go in there, you're going to do this, the main search for that particular product and look at uh, the competitors or I guess the products that are popping up at this point. They're not yet competitors because you haven't actually entered into this market. But look at the search results and then take a look at the number of reviews or ratings that um, each of the products has. Okay, this is this is important. Um, it's going to give you an idea of how difficult it might be to actually outrank these guys. Okay, so what I like to do is I look for products where the top products, let's say the top five products, have somewhere... Uh, I would say a little bit less or somewhere under 300 reviews each. I feel like if it gets over 300, like let's just say it's 500 or they have a thousand or more than a thousand reviews, then it's going to be really tough to unseat that particular product. If I'm, if I'm shooting for that, 
you know, to try to eclipse them. Now, if it's just the top one that has that, and then the number two, three, four, and five results um, have much smaller numbers, you know, they only have 20, 30, 40 re, uh, reviews each, then that might still be a product uh, that interests me. But if they all have, you know, over 300 reviews, it's probably going to be a pretty difficult, very competitive uh, market. So you might want to look elsewhere. It's hard to say without going into more details, you know, going into and looking at all the factors. But um, as a good rule of thumb, take a look at the the first uh, page of results and just look at the top five to 10 review or uh, sorry, uh, products and see if those products have over 300 reviews. By the way, the number of reviews themselves doesn't mean or that's not specifically what makes it hard to outrank them. For example, if they've got 1,200 reviews, that means their sales volume is probably pretty high, which means in order to outrank them, typically you're going to have to sell at least as many, if not more, units than they do. So it could be just a difficult thing to do. You might not even have the resources to compete. The other thing is, it goes back to what I said earlier, where if you have a product and your competing product are showing up in a search or showing up in these search results, and their product has 1,200 reviews and yours only has 12. You know, all things being equal, which one would you buy if you're the, the customer? You're know, you going to buy the one that has, you know, 1,200 people that have essentially said, this is awesome? Probably, right? We're wired that way. We're geared. It's, uh, we're, there's safety in numbers. We kind of want to go where the crowd is. And then as more people buy their product, their conversion rate goes up, right? They get more sales per click than... Uh, you're getting which means Amazon continues to rank them higher so again try to sh shoot for uh, those ones that are a little bit lower and if you can find a niche where there's it looks like there's good a uh, good number of sales per month for the product and there's just not that many reviews then you landed a gold mine and that's something to definitely look into a little bit more okay so let's say that you do now have a product and you've looked it up or you, you've done you've done a research you've you've pulled the search results for that particular product, the main what you think the main keyword search result would be for that particular product, and it looks good, right? Everybody's under 300 search results, I'm sorry, 300 reviews, and their BSR is within the range that we wanted to, to find a product in. If you uh, don't know about this, I covered that in the last uh, episode, and I mentioned that the BSR should fall somewhere probably between 1,000 and 5,000, and that's gonna give you enough sales volume to make the product worth going after. So something between 1,000 and 5,000, and then you want the reviews to be under 300 on the top, let's say five to 10 products. I would say the top five products. 10 kind of gets a little bit, uh, I think it thins it out a little bit too much. Um, then what you want to do is you want to get those products and you want to track them for, for a little bit. I would say track them for about a week. And what I mean by tracking is you want to track their, their BSR, okay? You're gonna, the BSR is an indicator of the sales. So you want to see if the, that sales volume that they're generating is consistent every single day for about a week. If it's if they're running a promotion, for example, they're trying to get reviews, there's something going on, they might be inflated, right? They might be spiked and you might be basing your decision on on jumping into this niche because you're like, wow, man, this product is like killing it. When in reality, it's just a short-term little burst or a big burst, right? I'm guilty of this. I actually did this uh, or made this error. I actually had a product that I was monitoring and it looked really cool and I only monitored it for two or three days and I was like man this thing is awesome there's no competition I can't believe it and I jumped on it and I ordered it and I actually never went back and and looked at the data after that in terms of seeing you know if it was fluctuating and sure enough you know I got uh, I got hammered you know by the time the product was ready to be shipped out to Amazon I went back to see you know if that other company's products had increased their sales and it had dropped like to one tenth the number that it was. And I was just really, really shocked. And that's because a lot of the tools that are out there that track this kind of stuff, they base the numbers of sales that a product is making on whatever the difference is in sales numbers for that particular day. So, you know, if it sees that in the last 24 hours it made 30 sales, then it does an extrapolation and it says, well, okay, well, 30 sales times 30 days means it's doing 9,000, or sorry, uh, 900 sales and then the numbers are completely off. So what I suggest you do is you use a site called camelcamelcamel.com. Sounds weird, right? Three camels. And you go there and you can put the product in and you can actually track its sales rank, the BSR, over the course of a week. And just do that. You can put multiple products in there and just 
you kind of want to maintain, or sorry, you want to see that the product maintains a nice steady level. It's going to fluctuate a little because all products do hour by hour. But if it's pretty stable, pretty solid for, for the week, then you're probably going to be okay uh, for the most part. You can track it for longer if you've got the time, but I suggest at least a week and then you'll know if it's a, you know, that if it's legitimately selling the, the units that you think it is, or if they were going through some kind of giveaway, promo giveaway, or or something was going on, they had a sale or something like that. Okay, so the next thing I would do now, assuming that everything else now is good, I've tracked the product, it's looking awesome. The last week the sales have been very consistent uh, by tracking it through Camel, Camel, Camel. Uh, BSR is pretty much the same. Uh, like I said, it fluctuates a little, but overall it's about the same. What am I gonna look at next? Well, I wanna see how good the competition products uh, look, you know, let's let's go look at their images first. Does it look like a good quality product? You know, are they getting the sales because the product just looks awesome and they've got the reviews now? Or is it because everything else looks awesome too? So their photos, you know, go and take a look at those. See if they're high quality. Look at, you know, the top five products that pulled up on the search results. And see if you think you can do a better job. And I can tell you right now with photos, it, it's amazing the difference the the results are when you use a good camera, the right lighting, and you just spend a little bit of time, maybe even a little bit of money, making sure that that product, uh, the photo, the product photo uh, looks good. I see it over and over again where people spend all this time creating their perfect product for themselves. They spend all this time on the keyword research and everything else, and then they just snap a photo with their iPhone. You know, the lighting's just poor and the product just looks bad, or they throw a bunch of writing up on there, and it's just, it's not, not only does it look bad, but it's probably against... Amazon's terms of service of how you can even show a product in the image. And I'm going to do a, uh, an episode on, on just the photos because that's, there's a lot of important things there. But look at, the re, uh, look at the competition, see what their photos look like, their images, and um, take notes. See what really stands out to you in the product, what you like. Look at the stuff that you really don't like and, and make note of that as well so you can make sure you don't do that. And just always make sure you have really good lighting when you're when you're doing your photos. There are services out there that you can use to uh, to take photos for you. And again, we'll, we'll get into those details later on. It's not that important right now. Next thing I would do is look at their product name and see if they are actually using prime keywords, those juicy keywords in their title. Because that's the stuff that Amazon is using to actually rank those products, or at least it's one of the most important variables. So are they actually using the keywords that are that people are using to actually find these types of products in their title. Now, if they're one of the top products, they probably are, but you want to look at it. They might be missing some of the stuff, right? They might not be using the right phrases, the right keywords uh, in the title. Now, the other thing you want to look at as well is the bullet points or are the bullet points. The bullet points uh, at this time anyways are also ranked by Amazon keywords within the bullet points. So you want to do a mix, right? You want to mix the, your, your juiciest keywords within the title and within the bullet points. So are your competitors doing this? Are, are there opportunities where they've just not optimized their, their listings? They're not using all the keywords that they should? I mean, this could be a very huge opportunity for you. Copy their titles, copy their bullet points, put them into a spreadsheet, analyze that stuff, right? Take a look at it. It'll give you ideas later when you're writing your own bullet points and your own titles and and the keyword phrases or fields that you're going to have. You're going to have five of those. So take a look at that. See what everybody's doing. Are they good? Are they bad? What do you like? What don't you like? Uh, take note of everything. Okay, so one of the final things that we're going to cover here is now you've got this product, right? Um, you've checked the competitors. Sales are stable. Everybody's got less than 300 reviews. Everything looks good. The products are, are not owned and being sold by Amazon. What do you do now? Well, you want to take that product and you want to make sure that you can get it sourced. So what I do and what a lot of people do is uh, we source the products through Alibaba. Okay, and Alibaba.com is the site and it's, a, it's the world's largest um, site for suppliers to list their services and products on. Um, so you can find factories from pretty much every country there. The majority of people that I know that are using Alibaba are manufacturing in China and Taiwan, but you can find factories, like I said, from just about any country. So Alibaba is where you want to go, I think, uh, in order to get stuff inexpensively, get it done quickly, 
and uh, pretty much find anything that you need to get made um, is going to be available on Alibaba. Now, that's a whole episode on its own, and we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to stop this one here, and on the next episode, we'll be talking about Alibaba. We're going to be talking about how to find your product on there, how to make sure that you're not pulling in scammers that are actually trying to uh, get on your your suppliers list and and take your money. We're going to be talking about how to get samples, what you should do, how long you should expect to wait, what it's going to cost, what emails you're going to want to send to, to actually get the communication going, how to modify the products that they might already have to make it your own so that when you private label, people aren't jumping on your listing. Some issues that I went through when I was going through and trying to find suppliers and we'll be talking about trade assurance, gold suppliers, patent issues, paying these suppliers and how you should do that, plus a lot of other stuff. So tune in to that episode. It's going to be awesome. That's episode eight, and that's coming up next. So please stay tuned for the next episode. If you haven't already done so, please, please um, click that subscribe button and subscribe to the podcast. You can also get all the podcasts and additional information at the website, and that's at ampmpodcast.com. So thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the AMPM Podcast, hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider Insider tools, tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.